Hi, everyone, and welcome to our Active Health Management Wellness Webinar Program. Today, we'll, we will be presenting the webinar, Resilient, Bouncing Back. So before we get started, just a few housekeeping items. Please note that as an attendee, you are part of a larger audience and you'll be in listen-only mode. Due to healthcare privacy rights, we're not displaying the list of attendees during today's event. And it will be a question and answer session at the end of today's presentation. However, you may ask a question at any time using the chat function. And if you would, please complete the survey at the end of the program to provide your feedback about today's presentation. Today's webinar will also be recorded. So just to start out, let's go ahead and practice that chat feature to make sure everyone knows where it is and how to use it. Uh, if you're not sure where it is, look in the top right of your screen. You should see the chat button. And if you wouldn't mind sending a quick hello or a hi just to test it out. So when you're sending the, the message, make sure to send it to both the host and the presenter in that send to option. Excellent, seeing lots of highs there. So everyone's familiar with the chat function. All right, well with that, I'd like to now introduce today's presenter, Patricia Heflin. So just a little bit about Patricia. Patricia holds a Master of Science degree in nutrition. She's a registered dietitian with over 18 years of experience in community nutrition and wellness. Patricia's specialty is lifestyle management with a focus on weight management. And her personal mission is to help others discover their own personal path to optimal health and well-being. Here's Patricia. Thank you so much, Brian, for that great introduction. I'm very honored to be with you guys this afternoon, and thank you for taking time out of your busy day to learn a little bit more about resilience. As we get started, let's practice chat again with a question I have for you guys. When something goes wrong, do you tend to bounce back or fall apart? And if you have a different answer to that, that is fine as well. If you can chat in kind of your first reaction to when your day does just not go as planned. And also if you have a twofold answer, I know sometimes if we are caught unawares, we can tend to be a little surprised and fall apart initially. Uh, but if we can prepare for that, we will typically bounce back, as some of you have answered, so that's awesome. And yes, sometimes it will be quicker than others, and it is going to depend on the circumstance, of course. So also through this presentation, I have put in a few trivia questions to keep us awake, keep us interested in uh, what we're talking about, and I thought it would be fun to see if we could get a few notable people throughout history or what some of us would call famous throughout the past years uh, that have overcome adversity or resilience. So our first person to guess is a gentleman who, when he was just 22 years of age and after he played in his first professional football game, he was cut from the team and sent home with only $7 in his pocket, with his hopes and dreams shattered. Can anyone guess who that might be? If you've ever watched a wrestling or some sporting events on television and different uh, lots of action movies, you might be able to guess who this person is. I'll give you a couple of hints. Great. Someone guessed it. He is known as The Rock or Dwayne Johnson. Very good. He, uh, Dwayne Johnson is one of Time 100's most influential people. He is an actor, a producer, a professional wrestler, and he has 100 plus million followers, followers on social media. So during our time this afternoon, we will talk about exactly what resilience is and why it is really important in living a healthy and happy life. We will discover how we can use our mind to improve our physical health, as well as take away six tools that we can use for being more resilient. So I've got another opportunity here for you to give me some feedback. What do you first think of when someone mentions resilience? 
or being resilient to you, what definition or what phrase comes to your mind, if you don't mind sharing that with me? Someone may say overcoming difficulties, getting back up, absolutely. Being tough, good answers. Well, we can describe it as being having that inner strength, as someone just also added in, that helps you bounce back after stressful situations. But the key is right here in the last part of the definition, without being overwhelmed or acting in a destructive way. So that is what we're going to work on today. We will have these setbacks, difficult changes. Maybe we just have a season of life that we're going through right now that's difficult. Uh, you may be facing with a um, unexpected illness. Uh, things just happen. Life happens, right? So hopefully we can um, learn how to develop these small steps to build our inner resilience skills so that when we do come through changes or difficult situations that we will know better how to plan ahead and act more appropriately and in a helpful way. And my favorite way to give you a visual of resilience is picture a toddler who has just learned to walk. If you've, you know, uh, seen a child that is in this stage, at first they start out pretty timid. They're going to start putting their toes down on the ground and then the rest of their foot. And then once they get that sure footing, they'll start moving and pulling up on objects and using anything they can hold on to to get around. But once they are completely mobile, you better watch out, right? Because they are on the go constantly and they pretty do not much do not let anything stand in their way. If they are after a toy or an object, their favorite snack for sure, and they are going to get going and achieve that goal and get to that destination. Well, when they take off at that almost <laughs> breakneck speed for a toddler, what usually happens? They will probably fall down at some point. But typically, if you've ever watched a child in this stage, they may cry. Usually, if they're not hurt, though, they will jump right back up and just keep on going and get their eye back on the prize and get to that snack or whatever that toy might be. So that kind of shows us there that we are born with some of these innate skills for resiliency. But as we've grown older and we've become adults, we may have lost some of that inborn skill to bounce back and we kind of have to develop these tools to teach ourselves to keep going or endure certain changes and difficult seasons throughout our lives. So I've got another um, little poll, so to speak, here, and there's five statements. All of these are great. There's nothing wrong with either one of these, but pick which one that you feel like you are strongest at and share that with us. Uh, usually we do have some skills with being resilient, but there might be one that we feel stronger at. It might be uh, able to learn valuable lessons from all experiences. So just chat in real quickly what you feel like that you are pretty good at right now. A lot of people identify with C, that they're usually optimistic. I am as well. We like to see the glass half full instead of the glass half empty. Uh, feeling self-confident and appreciating oneself is great, especially learning those valuable lessons um, on the, when we come out of these difficult situations. So now let's take which statement that we may feel less confident in or that we feel like we could improve our resiliency skills with and share that if you are so comfortable. And I'll just go ahead and share mine with you. Mine is D. I do not tolerate high uncertainty and ambiguity very well. I like to plan. Anyone that knows me knows that I have a, a huge paper planner that I carry around with me, especially for my work, and also to know where my kids are going to be and when, and I like to know what I'm going to have for dinner tonight, where I'm going on vacation this summer, and, you know, through, I can plan throughout the whole year if I have all of the information. I really don't like not knowing what the outcome is going to be. But I know that if I can learn how to adapt to these in certain situations, that will make my resiliency 
stronger. So that is something that I'm working on uh, to be able to do that in a little bit better way. So it's really important to recognize how our minds and our bodies are connected. Sometimes we treat our bodies like machines, we jump out of bed, we immediately start our day, go to work, do what we have to do, come home, do chores, and we really don't pay a whole lot of attention to our thought process and our feelings. But when we begin to neglect that, that can cause some problems with our bodies. We may start experiencing uh, tension and pain in our back, or our neck, also headaches or stomach problems. So if you've experienced any of these recently and there is no obvious medical reason for it or other explanation, then it could just be that you may not be dealing with stress or this certain season of your life in the healthiest way possible. But the good news is that your brain actually produces substances that can improve your health. These are endorphins and natural painkillers and also a hormone called gamma globulin, which strengthens your immune system. Research has shown that your, what your brain produces depends in part on your thoughts and how you feel and also your expectations. For instance, if you're ill but you have hope and a positive attitude and you believe you will get better, then your brain is more likely to produce these chemicals I just mentioned that will boost your body's natural healing power. So we're going to move into more of how we can build resilience. But before we do that, let's do another trivia question. This one's really short. It's going to go way back into history uh, before the rock. <laughs> so uh, this person was unable to speak until he was four years of age. His teacher said he would never amount to much. See if you can guess who that might be. If you guessed Albert Einstein, you guessed correctly. Thomas Edison is a close second, probably both right in there, but it was Albert Einstein who was told, uh, his parents were told that uh, when he was four, he couldn't speak, so he wouldn't have a very successful life. Well, we know that we <laughs> owe a lot of our modern conveniences to him, and so I would have to say that uh, whoever that was, they were wrong with that. So um, he's a very good example of overcoming adversity at a really young age. So as we move on to learning about uh, changing our ways that we think and how we act to become more resilient, it's important to realize that this is something that we do in small steps. It's not going to happen overnight. It's great to, uh, to have a positive outlook on this and know that day by day you're learning more about yourself uh, through careful self-evaluation and how you respond to certain situations helps you to do better through the next difficulty that you may have. So we can develop this by changing our way of thinking. So let's share with each other what are ways that you try to change your way of thinking to be more positive, if you feel comfortable chatting that in. One suggestion is positive affirmations. That's just repeating uh, positive statements about yourself to yourself. Having a network of people that you trust, that's really great. We're going to talk about building relationships in just a few slides. Looking at that glass half, let's see, I like, okay, not half full. Looking at things that are going well, yes, we'll talk about that, right? Um, and then also you could keep a thought journal, reframing your thoughts, as someone just suggested also. And so those are all good ways that we can work on our thought process. Next, what is something you can physically do to help build your resiliency? Uh, what would you say that could help you uh, change the way you act to be more positive? Does anybody have any suggestions? Okay, one that was shared earlier was to forgive and forget. Don't harbor grudges. Accept things as they are and move on. Don't uh, look back to the past. That's another great one. 
my favorite is to exercise first thing in the morning to get those happy hormones going. I definitely believe in this, and I'm not even a morning person. You can ask my husband. I jump up grumpy, but I get to the gym because I know that just in a few minutes, those good hormones are going to get going, and I will feel so much better, and it just seems to help my morning and the rest of my day, and I do sleep better at night by doing that, but I, I have to give myself that pep talk because I just don't enjoy getting up, but I know that the benefits are going to outweigh that little negative part right there of having to get out of a nice warm bed. Rest and exercise, another great suggestion, as I just mentioned. And then also what we might not think about is what we eat. Uh, and when we eat it and thinking about uh, are the foods that you are having uh, affecting how you, is that meal going to, or drink going to affect how you feel later? Uh, two things that can affect our energy levels um, are caffeine and sugar. And when we think about that in relation to how it makes us feel later, then that can also kind of affect our thought process. So it kind of has that domino effect. So that even that can be important. So here we are with our six tools to be more resilient. First three talking about the ways that we think, and the next, the last three are going to be on the ways uh, that we can act and things that we can do physically, some action items that we can put into place. So the first one is accepting that things change. The only thing that is constant in life is change, <laughs> is permanent. Things are always going to change. And the best thing that we can do to adjust with that is an anticipate that and accept the change. Sometimes that's easier than other times, uh, but just tell, think about if you've seen someone that's getting ready for a newborn, newborn baby on the way, um, you know, that you know for several months in advance that that baby is coming. And usually as soon as the parents are aware they have a newborn coming, they are going to start preparing for that. They start preparing the nursery, the crib, the diapers. They're going to get all those things. So by the time the baby gets here, they are ready. So that's a good example of anticipating and accepting the change. Um, a current change in my household right now is that I have a 14-year-old daughter who is starting to learn to drive because she will be 15 later this year. And um, my mama heart doesn't really want to accept that, but I know, too, that that is part of life. So we are doing our best as a family to anticipate that in a positive way and train her and help teach her the basics of driving and safe road skills. We are giving her the handbook to learn the real rules of the road and also um, have her signed up for driver's ed. So we're anticipating that change. There are other changes that we may not have so much um, time to anticipate, to plan, like those types of events in our lives, but we can look at those as a challenge or an opportunity for growth rather than a threat. And I kind of think about in the workplace, um, we may have been doing this one work procedure the same way for 10 years, and we're used to it with the way it's always been done. <laughs> That's the way we feel like we should always do it. But in walks your supervisor with a new procedure, and it can kind of change things up. I think we've all probably um, had to deal with that, or a new computer, a new system, something new with our job, or maybe you've had been asked to take over someone else's role in addition to yours. And so sometimes we can feel a little threatened and need to step back and examine exactly how and why we feel that way. And I have kind of learned that that is a lot um, due in part to fear of the unknown. We don't know the outcome or, again, there's that C word, the change, and a lot of us get really comfortable in our comfort zone, and it's hard for us to, to anticipate those changes. But the best thing that we can do is our last point here is to expect the best. When we are approached with change or we, go, or we are going through a difficult situation, a lot of times we can tend to focus on the negative. Oh, this form is going to take so much more time than the old form, or they have no idea all of the other job duties I have to complete along with this new job duty, that sort of thing, or I don't feel like I will ever complete this project. Instead of going down that road, let's 
split that and think about all of the best outcomes, while this form is going to actually make me more productive in my job, I'm learning new skills, skills at my job, so I may be able to apply for the next level for a promotion or whatever that might be, but just putting that visual in that, your head that instead of the negative things that could happen, always expect that best outcome. So we'll see, get our slide changed here. So our next way to change how we think is looking at the big picture. It's really easy when we are in the midst of a trial or a difficult situation that, as my grandparents would say, you can't see the forest for the trees. Uh, you're just, you know, all of those obstacles are right there in front of you, or and you are in a certain season of life that you feel like this is going to go on forever. I know when I have, you, you have newborn babies and you're not getting any sleep and you're thinking, oh, I'm never going to sleep again until I'm 50. <laughs> but it does pass a little bit more quick quickly, as you well know, that it does pass very quickly. Uh, so those situations, you know, we might be in that job situation where we are taking on two positions at one time and we feel like that is never going to end. Um, but most things are temporary and that's one affirmation that you can repeat to yourself that this is temporary, this too shall pass. Um, just something positive like that to help you look beyond the current obstacles that you're currently facing and to, again, to improve on that positivity that we were talking about. And when you can, and as much as you can, it's really important to see the funny side of situations. And sometimes we can't do that. They may be pretty serious, but when your child has scribbled their best masterpiece on your newly painted bedroom wall, that can be one of those situations where you're not too happy at the moment, but you're probably going to laugh later. Or if you accidentally put a blue shoe on and a black shoe on this morning because you got dressed in the dark and you get to work and your coworkers laugh at you, then you have to laugh at yourselves, right? So it's really important, and I try to teach my children this, not to take yourself too seriously. Always use humor as much as you can and when it's appropriate to keep you positive. And speaking of that, our third tool for changing the way we think is tapping into the power of optimism. And so that gives us a good second to have a new trivia question and a new famous person. The key word here is going to be basketball. I will give you that hint. This person was cut from his high school basketball team, so he went home and locked himself in his room and cried. Could you possibly guess who that might be? Everyone is guessing this one correctly. If you guess Michael Jordan, that is correct. As a pretty easy one. All of us have been around long enough to know Michael Jordan, and it's really hard for me to believe that that actually happened to him. I did not know that until I did the research on these questions. So that's um, also another, you know, way to feel good about yourself, to you know that there will be times when you may feel like you haven't succeeded, but you eventually will if you keep uh, being positive and practicing uh, these tips for optimism. So here the first one is to focus on what's going well. Sometimes this goes back to that glass half empty sort of thing. We can think about what is going wrong or what we didn't get accomplished today. I didn't get all five things checked off of my list today or I missed the meeting because I had a flat tire and we can tend to just uh, fixate on those and it's much better for us to focus on what is going well. You may not have completed all five tasks on your list, but you completed three. Focus on each thing that has been succeeding for you at the time. It might be that you just got dressed and you made it to work today, or your child dressed themselves, or your spouse took out the trash after you've been asking them uh, several times to do that. You know, just those little things. Focus on what is going well. Practice gratitude kind of goes hand in hand with that. Um, so I'm going to ask you, probably putting you guys on the spot, uh, it is in the afternoon, but if you can think of something that you are grateful for right now, that just what first comes to your mind, you can chat that in.
family, friends. And also, when you are thinking about this, Grateful for Life, that is really good. Health and strength, y'all have some really good thoughts. But what I encourage others to do when they are thinking about this is to think unique things within each day. This would go along with keeping a gratitude journal. It might be that someone paid for your meal in the drive through at lunch or a coworker stayed 30 minutes late for you so you could leave uh, for a, to see your child play a sport, anything like that, something that it was kind of fun and unexpected. Those are, are really good, neat ways to practice gratitude. Also, looking for the benefits of the situation when we are in difficult times, we may not see that. And sometimes we may not realize the benefits until we come out of it. And we can say, well, I'm really glad that door didn't open at that time or I didn't get that job offer because now I'm happier where I am now. Or, you know, sometimes we just have to look on uh, when we come out of that situation for that. But then looking ahead, when we are in the midst of difficult times or adversity, Picturing yourself in your happy place, um, having good thoughts, it goes a long ways to helping your in, you endure that difficulty. And then lastly, building yourself up, being your own personal cheerleader. We're going to go over some affirmations in just one second, but that is just giving yourself you a pep talk. Sometimes we just have to do that. We say, I can do this. I will make it through this. I've done this before. I've been here before. Anything that helps us, and we just kind of have to uh, constantly feed those positive thoughts to ourselves to help us um, practice optimism. So now we're going to move on to our three action items, things that we can physically do day in and day out to help us build that resiliency. And we talked about this earlier, and several of you have mentioned that you're grateful for your family and your friends, and this goes along with just building those relationships and not only doing that, because most of us do uh, have a network of family and friends and even coworkers, but in our busy day and time, let me remind you that we do have to take time to foster that. Send your neighbor a text and ask how their day is going. Uh, check in with your friends and try to get together once a month or whenever you can to catch up. Um, be a part of a faith-based community or a volunteer group giving to others. A volunteer to help out an elderly neighbor with errands or taking care of their yard work. Whatever you can do to uh, not only get support from others, but give support as well. Number five is believing in yourself. And that may seem simple in and of itself, but a lot of times when we are in difficult situations or we may be feeling like, we're unsuccessful and might be failing at something, we can be down on ourselves and feel like we don't have that confidence that we need. So the best thing that we can do is look back on our achievements in life. So let's chat in what are some things that you personally have achieved in your life that you are proud of. It could be something big, such as completing graduate school, earning an, an additional degree, your family, having children. Those are all great suggestions. So what we can do is look back over the timeline of our life to focus on those accomplished accomplishments and the things that you have overcome, even the difficulties and adversities. I mean, I have several good friends that are breast cancer survivors, and they are in good health now, and they have come out on the other side of that. So um, anything like that that you have felt like that you have achieved over your life, or maybe even just learning a new skill or a new hobby, learning to knit or to uh, play golf. Uh, whatever that might be that helps give you that personal satisfaction and build your self-confidence is really important to keep in mind when you're doing that. And then I mentioned that we would talk a little bit about self-affirmations. And this is a good time to think about different types. The affirmations can be about things that you have achieved. 
or your strengths, such as you're a great organizer or you are creative, you are a leader, and also things that you are proud of and things that make you feel good about yourself, like your hobbies or the things that you spend time on, maybe volunteering with a certain group in your community. But my main suggestion for this is when you are having one of those wonderful feeling great about yourself days, jot these affirmations down. Because I can assure you when you're having a not so good for nothing terrible day, they're not going to come as readily to your mind. So if you have a little index card, just write down a few statements that help you feel better, that are positive for you. There are different things, you know, I always say this situation is temporary, be present, not perfect. Um, we tell each other all the time, you've got this. So tell yourself, you've got this. You will get through this. You are strong. You are loved. Whatever those uh, that hit home this with you, write those down on a good day and keep those for the bad days. And so now we have our last tip for resiliency, but it's probably one of the most important, and that is self-care doing things that you enjoy and making time for that. We can probably all identify with some of these suggestions. Love to see a good movie, have a good time with friends, whatever that might be. But the key is to make it a priority. In some form or fashion, we are all caregivers. We may not have a family at home that we take care of day in and day out, but we may have a pet or we have parents or coworkers or what I always say, if you have a goldfish or a houseplant, then you're a caregiver. We And we tend to put ourselves last. Even sometimes at work we do that. Um, and so it's good to schedule some time for yourself throughout the week. Think about your weekdays of where you can put in some mini sessions. It might be a 30-minute workout or 30 minutes to read a book. But schedule that in and give yourself time to do that. Give yourself time to transition and rest when you get home from the work day before you go into your evening chores or tasks that you do after your work day is over. And just kind of identify whatever makes you feel happy and is important to you. And those other things that we don't do as often, such as scheduling that lunch date or going to the movies, don't put it off. Go ahead and make it what I call a non-negotiable and get your calendar out today and text that friend and say, hey, we're going to for lunch next Wednesday or what day is good for you and go ahead and get those on your schedule. And that way, not only do you have it in your time frame, but you can look forward to that and that will go towards your positive thinking. So we've got another trivia question. This is the music uh, arena, so I'm um, going to think back a few years back to, I'll give it away when I say this, but back to the 60s, um, which famous music group was rejected by recording studios who said, we don't like their sound and they have no future in show business? Okay, are y'all awake? Yes, we have one correct answer. Awesome. Everybody has guessed correctly. If you thought about the Beatles, then that is correct. And I think we could all say that they definitely had a very successful career. Uh, so that's a great example as well. So I mentioned self-care and deep breathing is a really good way to do this. And we're actually going to do this now. And along with deep breathing, we um, recommend guided imagery. You can even have an actual physical picture of your happy place in front of you to practice this on routine. Of course, we all don't have one right now. So I want you to close your eyes and picture your happy place. It may be the beach with the waves rolling in and the sun shining and a slight breeze blowing and no other distractions and you're just resting. It could be your back porch uh, where you like to watch nature and the children play, or it could be a mountain scene, whatever your happy place is. It could be your bed, whatever's comfortable for you or relaxing or easy chair. Just think about that in your mind. And if you feel comfortable, close your eyes and then play one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly. And that what that will do is help you focus on your breath. 
we want to breathe in so deeply that you can feel your diaphragm expand just uh, right where the top of your rib cage is. As you breathe in deeply, your hands should come out just slightly from your body. And also, as you breathe in the air through your lungs, you should also feel your hand on your chest move just very slightly. So now let's breathe in deeply through our nose and feel your lungs fill with air and then your belly. And hold that for just a couple of seconds and then slowly exhale. As you picture your happy place, a quiet backyard or a soothing beach scene, breathe in deeply again through your nose. And hold that breath. And then slowly exhale. And your shoulders should feel less tight and you should feel less tension in your neck. You should start to feel calmer. And then one more time, breathe in deeply through your nose, that cleansing breath, and then slowly exhale. So I like to call these little mini zen moments where you can just tune out the world for just a couple of minutes. You can do this just about anywhere. I do say that you can do this in the car, but don't close your eyes if you're driving. But if you're sitting in traffic at the red light, Certainly you can practice your breath, but while eyes wide open, of course, in front of you. And then, you know, anytime at work or also recommend when you start your day and also when you end your day, it's just a really good way to practice self-care and get you back into the moment and reduce stress. And then last, we just have a couple of tips. Um, if you have children in the home or even if you don't, most of us come in contact with children at some point, whether or not we are coaching a little league team or leading a group at Girl Scouts or church or wherever that might be. But we just put in some recommendations here for fostering that for children as well, because we're seeing that children have so much stress these days and there's bullying, bullying and also increased risk of suicide attempts. And so I think resilience is a good way to help foster them and to help them grow into healthy, happy adults. So just showing them how important it is to feel confident, to try new things, to be loving and be optimistic about life is truly important. And the best way to do that is just to uh, display all of these tips that we talked about today. And as you become more resilient, they will see you as a role model. If you are calm, slow to anger, show love and affection to them and help them feel safe, then that will also build their resilience as well. So that concludes our session today. I hope that we've given you some ways that you'll be able to use in your own journey to resilience. It is a journey. It's not going to happen overnight. I recommend that you think of it as a muscle that will start small, but you're going to just strengthen it um, day by day and over time. And these six ways of changing how we think and how we act will help us to get on the right track. The key is to just identify work what works best for you. Keeping a gratitude journal may not work best for someone, but it will for someone else as well, the positive affirmations and so forth. And one of a quote that I found as I was preparing for this on resilience is to remember that life is not about how fast you run or how high you climb, but how well you bounce back. So to end, I have one final question for you. This person was fired from a newspaper job for lacking imagination. Imagination is your key hint. And no ideas. Who was he? Let's see if we can get 100% correct answers on this one. Close, but not quite. Oh, we've got a correct answer. Ding, ding. It was Walt Disney. So um, if you've been to Disneyland or Disney World or even seen a Disney show, then you know that whoever said that was completely wrong. So I just wanted to leave that last one with you. Don't forget that we have our website, myactivehelp.com. If you would like more tips on mindfulness or deep breathing or resiliency, you can find 
all of that here. And then we have our upcoming wellness webinar um, on May the 21st. Just note that if you're in the central time zone, it would of course be the hour earlier. And the topic is make your workplace work for you, all about uh, how to fit in health and wellness and incorporate that into your daily routine at work. And we thank you so much for your time today spending that with us. And if you have any questions, feel free to email those to activewellness at activehealth.net. And also, if you attended in a group, please send the list of attendees to activewellness at activehealth.net. And with that, I will turn it over to Brian to see if we have had any questions come in during the presentation. Thank you very much, Patricia. Yeah, that was excellent. Uh, yeah, if, if you do have a question, just a reminder, uh, go ahead and use that chat function and select the uh, presenter and host when you're sending in the question. And we have actually received a, a question in the chat, so I'll go ahead and read that aloud so everyone can hear. Uh, what are some healthy eating habits that we should practice to help manage stress? That's a good question. I did mention that just very briefly earlier. We could spend a lot of time on that. But two things, as I mentioned before, decreasing caffeine intake and sugar intake is key. Caffeine can just exacerbate anxiety, help us feel more, or cause us rather, not help us, to feel more jittery. So that, you know, would not promote restfulness or help us reduce our stress and, and also will prevent us from getting adequate sleep. And also the sugar, we might grab a candy bar or a soda to get that quick sugar lift in the afternoon, but it might fill us temporarily, uh, help us feel a little bit of energy, but later we're just going to crash as that kind of goes away out of our bodies. The best thing to do is drink as much water as we can, um, so many benefits for our body to stay hydrated, helps us to have more energy and feel rested, as well as including a wide variety of fruits and vegetables and whole grains and lean protein. Perfect. Um, there is another question that came through. Uh, does physical activity help to relieve stress? Absolutely. There, if anybody does uh, exercise on a regular basis, you can probably agree with that. It causes our body to produce those feel-good hormones that I mentioned. So once you get your heart pumping, your heart rate up for a continued period of time, you are getting more oxygen to your brain as well, and it's producing those endorphins and that adrenaline, adrenaline which are uh, the good feel-good chemicals in our bodies, and also it reduces a chemical or hormone in our body called cortisol that is produced by our bodies when we are under stress. The more stressed we are, the more cortisol we have in our bodies. It can cause us to feel sluggish, slow our metabolism down, and just not feel very well in general. So the more that we uh, incorporate physical activity into our daily routines, the lower those cortisol levels will be. Excellent. Doesn't look like there's any more questions in the queue, and we've reached the end of uh, the webinar time today. So I wanted to thank you all again for participating in this wellness webinar program. Please remember to complete the survey, which will appear on your screen at the end of the program. And if you do have further questions, you can email us at activewellness at activehealth.net. And we look forward to having you join our next webinar on May 21st. Thanks again for